Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters, co-founder of Brand Desk, where we work directly with visionaries to help build incredible brands. You know, one thing that really sets a brand apart is its reputation. And what better way to cultivate a sincere and lasting impression than by developing a reputation of kindness. And with everything going on in the world right now, it's important to remember that as business owners, our purpose is to serve a wider community. And doing so with a smile and a sense of kindness can make all the difference. Mm. That's why on this episode of Build Your Difference, we are pleased to be joined by author, speaker, blogger, and podcaster, Mr. Ase Daniels, and his new book, Kindness Defined. Welcome to Build Your Difference, Ase. It's a real pleasure. I am honored to be here with you, Pierre, and I'm excited to share with you. Man, I'll say, I gotta, I gotta tell you, when I heard that you were writing a new book, yeah. a book called Kindness Defined, mm -hmm. it immediately perked my interest and I yeah. just wanted to know all about it. So could you, could you start by just telling us what is Kindness Defined? What is this book that you're about to release? Kindness Defined is my personal story along with what I believe are very practical and immediately applicable principles on how we could be, make the shift from being nice to being kind. From being nice to being kind. So what, what, is, what is that difference? I mean, in, I guess, what is being nice and what is being kind? Nice to me is when there's a transaction occurring. Okay. You do for me, I do for you. Okay. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. But kindness is what I love, uh, a quote from Mark Twain. He says, kindness is what the blind can see and the deaf can hear. <laughs> okay, wow, we gotta sit with that for a second. Yeah. Okay, so what motivated you to, well, f actually, first of all, how did you recognize that difference? And then what motivated you to, to then communicate that in the form of a book? You know, one of the, um, the kindest people I've ever known was my mom. Okay. And just thinking about her life and her story, and how she raised us is to do for others. And I realized that a lot of us are intro powered. There's another term that I'm working on a new not moniker okay. instead of introvert, intro powered. Okay. And so intro powered people gain their strength from being alone. And usually introverts, in my opinion, get a negative connotation. And so my goal with Kindness Defined is to help bring intro powered people to the forefront not so much as having to be out front, but bringing their gifts and abilities so that all can see and participate in it and that we can say, that we can understand how to say no with a smile. Yeah. A lot of times being nice is when we say yes with our automatic yes responses without thinking, but we really mean no. That to me is when we're being nice. You know, I'll say this is to me uh, like a, a sort of a cultural revolution in a way because a lot of the media mm -hmm. that we consume uh, really is about being ruthless and being the opposite of kind yeah. if you want to be ambitious and if you want to be successful. Yeah. So what's, what's really interesting to me is that it, it, it's like you've identified that no, that doesn't, that's a, not, a, not actually necessary mm -hmm. and you can still achieve success while being kind. And I mean, I mean, I, I, I guess it, I mean, that's, that's a real interesting uh, state of the world that that is a revolutionary, yeah. <laughs> a, re a revolutionary theory. But um, tell me, uh, how long did it take you to, I guess, from, from inception mm. to, to where you are now, where this book is uh, about to be released, or if, depending on when you're watching this, available now, mm. what, what, how long was that process for you? You know, it was a five-year journey Ooh. writing this book. Um, and honestly, Pierre, it was me trying to write the book and do everything associated with the book all on my own. So that's what dragged this whole process. I was trying to mm. write it, I was trying to edit it, I was trying to market it, I was trying to do my own website, and you know, living life and working full-time and everything else. Mm. But once I finally said, you know what, I need to invest in me, a lot, a, a lot of nice people don't do this, mm. I wanted to invest in me, pay for a quality publisher, editor, somebody to do my website so I could focus on my lane of greatness. Right. What, what, was, the, uh, what was that experience like for you? 
you know, um, when you made that shift and said, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna invest in me, yeah. and then you and you went through those necessary steps to kind of get you where you are now. What was that process like for you as someone who, as you just said, and I think I can relate to you as someone who, you know, that sometimes that's difficult to do because yeah. we're, we're sometimes thinking about other people before ourselves. So what was that shift like for you? It was transformational, Pierre. Honestly, to go where, because I grew up being a nice guy, you know, and always doing for others, and I love doing for others. And that's one of the things I wanted to make sure this book highlights is that we can do for others, but we have to make the priority of put, uh, putting ourselves first so we can do exponentially more for others. Okay. That's the difference. And I think sometimes we get it stuck, but we end up pouring from an empty cup. And what I heard, what I read that changed, another book that changed my life was Boundaries by Henry Cloud. Okay. And he talked about where people are outwardly compliant, but inwardly resentful. And to me, that's a dangerous space to be, especially in the world we are today. A lot of this, this pandemic has really revealed a lot of the frustrations and the anger and the resentment that have been built up by us nice guys now it's time to make the shift from being nice to being kind so we can avoid what I've, another book that was very popular, um, The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin, she calls it Obliger Rebellion. How did you go about getting your book published and, and what was that experience like for you as a, as a first time author? I decided to find, I wanted to go with the black publisher for me personally, um, that was important for me and a couple of other friends of mine had published books with this publishing uh, company called Water Spring Publishing. So I decided to give them a call and it's been great ever since. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I'd love to know uh, once, you, once you began working with your publisher, was there, was there research that you needed to do uh, to help you sort of complete that book? Did they maybe point out ideas that, and sort of contribute that you said, oh, I didn't think about that. And then, you know, went back and researched and then added more to the book. What, what, did you find that there was a that once you got your publisher involved, that the process of writing became more uh, 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 larger? I guess <laughs> more involved. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. More involved. You know, the research I did was I was very curious at how kindness can impact our physical being okay. and our, and how we can feel, right? And I mean, things jumped out. And I have a few things I wanted to share. Okay. Is uh, kindness increases. A couple of things: it increases our energy, increases our happiness, increases our lifespan, increases our pleasure. And it re let me read this here. It says witnessing acts of kindness produces oxytocin, occasionally referred to as the love hormone, mm. which aids in lowering blood pressure and improving our overall heart health. Oxytocin is also increases our self-esteem and optimism which is extra helpful when you're in anxious or in a shy, in a social situation. So kindness, what I've termed, has a, a, tri, as a, a, a trifecta effect where the person doing the act of kindness with someone else has an oxytocin release. It's a natural high the body releases. Also, the person receiving the act of kindness gets an a, a oxytocin release in the body. Then the people witnessing the act of kindness that I perform for you or you perform for me also get the same oxytocin release. So everybody involved gets a natural high. So, so why aren't we more kind? I believe a lot of people don't think that being nice is synonymous with being kind. But what I've realized is that, again, when it's transactional, and then I do for you and I don't get it, and I am outwardly compliant and say I'm fine, which I've heard from a four, one of my uh, youth leaders growing up. He said when you're fine, you're fearful, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Oh, wow. And so ever since he said that, it's stuck in my, it's stuck in my mind. Could you, could you just say that again yeah. for us, please? <laughs> See, when we say we're fine, yeah. that means that we're fearful, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. And because a lot of us intro power people, we, we, we tell everybody one thing, but we're really feeling another. Okay. Because we haven't learned how to properly express how we feel with clarity and kindness. Uh, Brene Brown says that to be clear is to be kind. Okay. But we haven't learned how to verbalize that, so we stuff it and pretend that we're not affected. Okay. 
but then I believe it, it comes out in, it's going to come out, and it comes out in ways that people are driving, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, how we treat the dog, and usually people closest to us, not involved with the situation, but the people closest to us usually are impacted negatively. negatively. Wow. That's, that is kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, there, there's so much rhetoric. Are you familiar with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk? Yes. Okay. And so he, he wanted, he's one of my favorites, but then there's so many others as mm -hmm. well. Um, uh, another one might be Grant Cardone. Yep. Uh, these are just sort of famous mouthpieces on ambition sure. and success. And, you know, I, I think oftentimes there's this word thrown around in the entrepreneurship community, hustle. Mm. All right. And kind of, you know, just grind, work, work yourself to the bone, grind, mm. grind, 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 <laughs> regardless of what it does to you yeah. and regardless of what it does to your family, because at the end of the day, that's the only way you're going to achieve success. And, and I think inherently we know that, that, that there's probably, that's probably not all the way true, yeah. but I, I, I don't think I've in, encountered until your book, mm -hmm. I don't think I've really been able to pinpoint what was sort of missing from that equation. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk often says self-awareness is key. Mm -hmm. and, and so I really resonated with that being self-aware, but I think... What he's not saying, what he should be saying, and I think this is what you're this is what you're adding to that conversation, mm -hmm. is it's great to be self aware. Yeah. But you know what? It's it's even better to be self aware and kind. Yes. And, and and everything doesn't have to be a transaction. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I'm kind of guilty of this because in one of our build your difference episodes, I actually was telling people that uh, that when you're in business for yourself, when you're an entrepreneur, you have to get used to the idea that your relationships with customers are, for the most part, transactional. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not just going to sort of show up and give you an opportunity for, because they, just because they, you know, be, just because you work at this location, right. you have to kind of earn that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I meant by that. But I think, and, I, and I, that's why I love what you're, what you're bringing to the table in your book, because what I wish I did say, and now what I want to say, yeah. is that um, uh, regardless of, of whether or not uh, if you give and, and receive or give and don't receive, mm. what people will remember is how you made them feel. That's right. Okay. And that is through your kindness. Yeah. I, I really, I think that's, um, okay. Well, listen, uh, we're going to take a quick break, <laughs> but stay with us because I, we, I want to learn so much more about Ase and his book, Kindness Defined. And I know you do too. So we'll be right back after these messages. Minds can achieve anything. We make sure they get to college. Federal Student Aid provides more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds to make college possible for anyone with the mind to get there. Because if given the chance, minds will do great things. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. And welcome back to Skills to Pay the Bills and this segment of Build Your Difference. Today, I am joined by speaker, podcaster, and blogger, Mr. Ase Daniels, author of the new book, Kindness Defined. Ase, we were just talking about, before the break, we mm -hmm. were just talking about business ownership yeah. and entrepreneurship and how mm -hmm. all this rhetoric often gets thrown about being ambitious and hustling and oftentimes we forget that it's about how, how you make people feel. It's yeah. about that kindness element. What would you say to business owners who are really striving to be successful but, but uh, are, have that hustle mentality and want to find a way to, to, to be kinder? Yeah. I believe kindness starts with us individually. And we need to understand and believe that we are the resource that's needed. Right? And I believe that when we are business owners, it's important to know our value. And so when we say the price is going to be X amount, we need to be very careful that we're not undercharging and over delivering. That's when we're being nice. We're, we're doing more than what we're getting paid for. And because what it'll, it'll come across as we're doing all this and we're not getting paid. And that's where the frustration comes. That's where the, the bitterness mm -hmm. and the anger comes from. But if we are clear up front, listen, this is the price and be confident in that price mm -hmm. because we know as intro powered people, we're going to over deliver regardless because we have a mindset and want to help and want to serve in our lane of greatness. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very clear and confident in our charging 
prices. Okay, that's one very practical tip. Basically, making sure that the w what we're asking for in terms of comp compensation is uh, not only fair, because because yeah. like you said, that's really the nice part. But mm -hmm. but where do you, that the customer is getting value, yeah. but that you don't end up presenting the work that you need to do or to to perform as part of this service. My question for you is, mm -hmm. what's another practical tip? Okay, so we've just talked about basically compensation, but mm -hmm. what's another practical tip that you might want to offer to entrepreneurs or business owners uh, to help them embrace kindness in their, in their business? Self-care. Whoa. Number one. And you know, that whole grind mentality, it's short-lived because the challenge becomes with business and entrepreneurs is that we give, 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 and grind, 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 but the people closest to us have a shell of us that we go back home to. And I believe that as we invest in ourselves and pour into ourselves, we give from a full cup as opposed to a half full or empty cup. That comes across to our customers. Mm. That, then we, when we do it, we're doing with energy, we're doing with excitement, with passion, and with kindness. But we have to be kind to ourselves first in order to give kindness. That's that that is powerful. That is excellent. Okay, listen, uh, you you you're at the to, in my opinion you're at the the you're the, uh, uh, the you're pioneering a new movement. Yeah. Okay, you're like the tip of the spear right now. Okay, with this sort of revolution. Yeah. And I want to know when when you're not writing, <laughs> when you're not when you're not spreading the gospel of kindness. Mm -hmm. What is what is Mr. Ase Daniels doing? What do you like to do when you're not writing? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on modeling what I'm trying to share with my community is, again, self-care and I, what I call self-mastery, knowing what works, what doesn't work, making tweaks like the radio dial, tweaking and adjusting as far as my self-care is concerned. So I like to, I do yoga, um, I play video games, you know, I exercise, all those things are very good. Uh, for me, you know, my wife and I love to travel mm -hmm. and uh, we love to go and check out seminars and continue to, you know, improve on ourselves. So when we give, you know, she's a therapist. I'm working on my counseling degree and writing this book. Um, so I want to make sure that what I give and share with my coaching or whatever else I'm giving from a place of, of, of practical application that I've done. So it comes across as not just some theory that I read in a book, but I'm living it out. Right. What was one of the most surprising things that you experienced or learned while writing Kindness Defined? Um, when I started writing, I realized that I love writing. It, I wasn't a writer, I didn't go to school for writing, mm -hmm. but I felt passionate about it and I said I was just gonna start and as I started, other books were birthed out of me just starting. And so, Pierre, I'm telling you, when I finished Kindness to find, and I was, and I finally hired an editor. I said, "Wow, okay, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on feedback and corrections. Let me keep writing." And out of waiting for, while I was waiting for this to be finished editing, then a devotional book came out of this one, and now I'm also on the third book. So just writing in and of itself created an energy, a momentum that I couldn't stop, and I just could have to continue writing. That's what I learned. Yeah. As you go. The, the momentum will push you into areas and bring new ideas to mind that would never have come if I hadn't started. I'm so glad that you said that. It reminds me of the idea that all you have to do is just start. Oh my and if we can just start, yeah. <laughs> we're, we, we can be so surprised uh, with not only what we can a achieve and accomplish, but what, what we can do beyond what we even expected. Um, a lot of times people are, you know, they have this, this vision, mm -hmm. they have this, uh, this uh, burning vision that they, that they, uh, 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 they want to contribute to the yeah, world. Absolutely. But the hardest thing to do is to just, is to actually take that first step and yeah. actually start in earnest. I'm not talking yeah. about the, the I'm going to dance around it. I'm right. the, the actual real investment step and I'm going to make, the, I'm going to take the, a legitimate step in making this happen. Yeah. That's a, that's a real hard thing. So I love hearing you say that when you, when you, uh, uh, in, in sort of dived in mm -hmm. to this book, yeah. outbirthed other books that you that you could not have foreseen. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and you know one thing also for us intro powered people is that 
we need to understand that we can, it's okay to invest in ourselves because we know our heart is going to want to help and do for others. But once we invest in ourselves, we, 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 we build wide so we can build high right. with our, our business, our relationships, our family, those things. But we, we have to, we're the foundation. And if we don't build on us first, then anything we build after that is going to be short lived. You know, I'll say that reminds me also of the fact that when, when, uh, you know, because you and I go way back. Mm -hmm. uh, and years ago, I was really just completely in, in video directing, video, uh, television, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that I had interest in entrepreneurship really beyond that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I kind of was forced to, I, I couldn't, I had a, a neck injury and I was sort of forced to not go to work for a little while. And in that period of time, I said, what am I going to do? Like, yeah. what am I going to do? And I started thinking, well, you know, I, I guess I do like entrepreneurship. Maybe I should, you know, try to launch another business. And in doing that, other business ideas oh, came out and I yep. started launching that. And, and, and I really learned that, wait a second, I, there's so much more that I can bring to the table yes. than I even knew of my own self. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, up until I was sort of forced to, to take a step back, I, d I was not being kind to myself. And yeah. I was not doing, as you say, building wide so that we can build high. Mm -hmm. I was actually building quite, uh, I guess you would say, I want to say narrow, mm -hmm. but in terms of the foundation, I was small. Yeah. I, was, I was building quite small in terms of wide and narrow in terms of height. I mean, because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't spreading out my... my uh, my, I'm going to say genius, but I don't mm. know. If, I don't know if, the, but no, I, I wasn't spreading it's it out. Your gifting, <laughs> my yeah, yeah, where you're talented and where you get energy from. When we don't invest in ourselves, and then think that we can do for everyone else and don't put it back into us first, mm -hmm. then I'm telling you, it's, it, it, a lot more people are frustrated these days than ever. Yeah, we're holding on to stress. And a lot of people that are going to the doctors now is because of stress-related issues. Right. And without dealing with those stressful issues, whatever we present and do for other people, it's not going to be our best. It's just not. And, and then, then the value is not going to come, and we're not going to get paid what we believe we deserve. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm really excited about this book, and I didn't know that you had other books uh, in the pipeline, and I'm really excited about those other books. So yeah. so. I'll say not only are you, are you a new author, mm -hmm. but I it looks like you are an author many times over yeah. in, in the in the foreseeable future. So my question for you is, what would you say to other up and coming uh, or aspirational writers, people who have in their heart a desire to write a book? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them to either help them across the finish line or to help them improve where they are already? Again. Start, write, don't try to be perfect, write, then invest in you by getting professionals, editor, publisher, marketing, website, get professionals to do that. And if you can't write then, you know, I mean, things are affordable, but again, it's about not doing it yourself so you can focus on where you're great. Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell any new, new uh, author, any new business owner, invest in you by taking care, mastering self-care for you, what that looks like for you, so you can present your best and let everybody else delegate everything else that you can do. One of the things that it today and I finally got wise on is hiring someone to come and clean the house. Mm. I mean, little things, Pierre. That is a practical step. That, <laughs> just knowing when you go in the house that is clean and everything's organized and put together, Again, you can focus on your lane of greatness mm -hmm. and not have to have all these other things. Now, everybody can't afford that, but I believe most of us that are entrepreneurs have resources, but we're not investing in us. We think we have to invest in everything else, but we need to invest in what's at home and with us first. So when we do write or start a business, it's the best version of us mm -hmm. that we're presenting to the world. You know, I'm really guilty of that. I want to thank you for saying that. I'm very, I'm... I'm oftentimes guilty of not investing as much as I should yeah. in myself uh, and often pouring it into my business and forgetting that, you know, you got to you got to invest in yourself because, like you said, I don't want to be an empty vessel pouring nothingness out into the world. Mm -hmm. I want to be I want to provide value. So I need to I need to take the time and invest in myself first. And, 
And you know, I love that practical tip of just hiring a, 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 a cleaner to come oh, in. Man. I guess changed uh, our lives. Yeah. What's another practical tip you can give us just as we as we begin to wrap up? Some I'm thinking I'm thinking in terms of like um, practical, but in terms of like like personal development. Yeah. What's something that that you that you think could really help? Get a therapist. Ooh. Yes. Get a therapist. Okay. Um, I believe a lot of us are, and, and again, this pandemic has revealed a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I, what I call areas of growth. Mm -hmm. And it's important, again, investing in ourselves and getting a professional yeah. that we can process and work through uh, childhood trauma issues. A lot of these things are here now. We're, it's no hiding it anymore. Yeah. They're here. But if we, again, if we pretend and stuff and lie to ourselves, I'm okay, I'm fine, mm -hmm. there's no issues here, but it comes out negatively in our interactions with others and whatever we're presenting business-wise, it's gonna come out. Right. So in order to be kind to others, we have to be kind to ourselves. And we have to learn what that looks like by sitting down with a professional, letting them, t so we can hear ourselves say wherever we're working on and let them ask questions to, to, to navigate and to weed out the negative and the lies and the misrepresentations that we've held onto yeah. So that we can say, wow, what I've been holding on to was a lie. It's not true. I, that's not about me. That wasn't, I'm telling you, Pierre, this is my journey. I'm, I, I like sharing because I'm not telling anybody to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. Right. And I, 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 it really hits. And I want to say thank you so much for sharing that incredible advice. So I want to say, uh, listen, thank you so much for, for watching Skills to Pay the Bills. This has been an incredible episode of Build Your Difference. And we're excited about the surge in entrepreneurship that's mm -hmm. happening across the country awesome. and right here in our local community. And if you'd like more information on Ose Daniel's new book, Kindness Defined, you can find it in bookstores and online at Amazon and the official website, www.kindnessdefined.com. And as always, don't forget the words of my favorite author, Octavia Butler. It's amazing what we can do if we simply refuse to give up.